Hello folks, welcome to Ravenport 22 and this is going to be a guide to the production chains and the new greenhouses on this map. So Ravenport 22 is by Sadabuki, if you're familiar with some of his work on Iron Plains or Alma, Missouri, you know there are some unique productions on this map so what I've got done is I've bought every production chain on the map with the exception of the sawmill and carpentry, I have not bothered to fill those because they're they're not different compared to base game. However, during my map tour, doing a bit of you know testing behind the scenes work, prepping for the map tour, I noticed there were some differences in the production rates of some of these production facilities. So, for example. The dairy so we go to our PDA and what I'll do is I'll leave chapters down below in the description so feel free to go to certain set sections so yeah this is gonna be a little short overview so start off with dairy so if we go to the dairy sect so yeah this is the dairy plant different to the base game obviously it's actually from FS19 Ravenports however so if we go over here looking at the recipes and that so I've gone and filled everything up so dairy holds 100,000 litres of milk and 36,000 litres of sugar and in terms with the actual speeds itself base game it's 15 to 13 and the cycles per month is 1200 I think it is what I've got down on my notes is like for example actually no butter is actually three times as fast actually looking at the production rates my correction there already so yeah butter is three times as fast as base game cheese on the other hand is only 20% faster this was 1200 cycles per month and chocolate, 2400, a 1 to 1 ratio, that is the same as base game. So, I'll go around, I'm going to show you folks on what productions to go for, what productions not to go for. And TLDR is sawmill and carpentry. You can still do it, I'm not saying you can't do forestry or anything like that, but terms with if you're looking for something that has a higher production output compared to the base game there's plenty of mods so it's packing facility can't remember who that is by like it's your carpentry that is a faster production rate sawmill we've got options so for example I've got installed so if we go to our productions and under factories things like the American Sawmill by Chris S and Roy S. That is a better production cycle. Actually, well, uh, so I do a little cheeky placement there. Because yes, I want to have a look. Is there a difference in cycles per month? So, 500 to 624 cycles a month compared to what we've got available actually that is a better ratio even still and that is the cheap version so let's get rid of that yeah that's a little quick test so yeah that's gonna be the intro next we'll go to the fabric and spinnery so here we are at the spinnery and with this map there ain't any facilities to make clothes however you can still make wool so not wool fabric so capacities are a hundred thousand litres each and yeah so it's a two to one and a five to three but cycles per month has been upped and look at that my notes yeah for both wool and fabric the actual production rate of how much you get per month, so almost 3,000 litres from wool in fabric and 3,450-ish from fabric cotton, that is 
double compared to the base game. And yeah, this is a similar story with the oil mill and actually yeah, another go to these cities. So for the sugar, these are double the cycles per month. Same recipe, same ratios. They all hold 700,000 liters each. And then if we scroll down here, we've got the oil mills. So you do your sunflower, canola, and olive oil. Again, the ratios are the same 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1. However, the cycles per month have been doubled. So usually that is 4,800 cycles per month compared to. 2400 cycles per month for olives and that. But here's the thing I've noticed I thought butter was nice at being three times the speed. However, looking at the green mill, usually it's like a 15 to 12, 15 to 11 or 13, whatever it is, base game, 15 to 18 for the oats and that. I think with the sorghum. So, the grain mill here, the grain elevator, so that is located here, north of field 8. That is 10 times the production rate compared to base game. 10 times, so. And we'll also look at later on in this video is the corn flour and all that. I'm going to look at the crop types of what we get with this map and I'm going to calculate how much output per month they can produce then from that we can produce our annual output look at the peak price and then from there we'll figure out what is the best production to go for on this map so let's go and do some work in and I'll come back to you folks in a few moments when I've gone and figured all this out. So right, spent the last couple of hours doing some research in that. I'm not including normal productions that you get with profits in that on FS22. Even though, as we've established, you get three times as much for the butter, 20% more for the cheese, double for the fabric, double for the oils, and double for the sugar. The flour, double flour, I have not included as well, but I have looked at dry corn in that, so, so let's start with our new production facilities. We've got the greenhouses in that, so starting off at the bottom, we've got the juice factory, so we can produce grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, and lemonade. To grow these, or to produce these, You'll need the greenhouse fruit, so that is for your lemons, orange, and apples and pineapples. And uh, for your grapes, obviously, you need the vineyard stuff. And yeah, let's start looking at the grape juice and that. And what I'm going to do is put a table up somewhere now. And feel free to pause it here and or refer it back to later. I'll try to leave a link for it down below but yeah basically this is a tally chart of everything we have or can produce on this map so for example go back up to the top dry corn technically this is the best you can do so actually where is the dry corn on here so yeah dry corn is a one-to-one -one ratio of corn to dried corn 160,000 litres a month you can get and yeah for the propane that is minimal that is 50 times 200 so what's that 10,000 or something a thousand whatever it is 1,000 and the cost of propane is 1,000 pounds for a thousand litres so a pound for a litre so in terms of the cost of this production, ain't too bad. And of course, I haven't included the cost of running set productions because when you look at the production cost per month or things like the fuels and that, it is relatively mid school. But anyway, so with the dry corn, we get 
168,000 liters a month annually. That is just over 2 million, 2.016 to be exact. And then if we look at the prices, so well, you have to scroll down a little bit. Android corn absolute peak price in February is £2,991 per thousand liter. So, doing the math, that is just over £6.029 million pounds you can get annually if you keep this topped up. However, the problem with this is. 6 million liters of core. You're going to need the entire map to do that, folks. So, that's one thing to consider. But still, regardless, that is technically the most profitable production. If you can keep up with it. But, I very much doubt you can. But, as we'll have a look. It's actually it's like, it's like the cornbread and that. The cornbread and that. That's the one to go for. So, but anyways, we'll look at that in a bit. Now what we need to go to is have a look at our greenhouses. So yeah, we've looked at greenhouse fruits. However, if we head over here, oh, train just arrived just in time, hop across. So we've got four new greenhouses. So if we go to our productions and greenhouses, so you've got the fruit greenhouse at Cars Manure. And then your normal large, medium and small greenhouse. What's the difference between those and the base game one? So this is the base game greenhouse, so have a look. So for example, tomatoes, one to one, 384 litres per month. If you scroll up to the small greenhouse, this is the modded version. Like with a lot of things we've seen thus far, that is double the output. And if you want the greenhouses for the pumpkins, my best advice would be stick with the small greenhouses because if you look at the ratios, it's a 1 to 2, 1536 cycles per month. So. That is just over 3,000 litres a month, 3,072. Go to the medium, exactly the same ratio. Go to the large, same ratio again, same cost. So, and terms with square footage, if you're just doing pumpkins, stick to the small greenhouse. Simple, really. So, yep, yeah, next we'll have a look at the juices so we'll, obviously now we can grow our lemons and all that just for the sake of it i am going to turn these on so fruits are on us so we need don't need anything else pumpkin we will need for later but yeah so if you let's say look at the fruits for the apples so having a look at the ratios it is all exactly the same in terms with output. Obviously, a bit more manure and water for the pineapples. But water is technically free if you know where to look for it. And manure, technically, yeah, it's double. But if you've got cows at 150 cows or a modded cow pen, then you know what? That ain't too bad to figure out because let's say with apples, 1,440 cycles per month, times that by four, and we get 5,760 apples per month. That's the same with the pineapples, oranges, and lemons. As so that per year, that is 69,120 we can produce. If we will just sell the fruits themselves, and I'm looking at from apples down to lemons. So apples, peak price is £1,356 per 1,000 litres. Pineapples, because it's double, £3,387 per month. 
orange and lemons is £2,370 at its peak price per thousand litres. So, if you're looking at just the fruits, not to convert them into juices, tourists with profitability, again, look at the chart I provided down below and in the earlier portion of the video. So, apples, you're getting £93,000 a year, Ninety four. let's say for sake of arguments. When I say these figures, I'm going to round it up or down to the nearest thousand. Going down to the pineapples, this is the best because you'll get £234,000 a year. And then for your orange and lemons, you get £164,000 a year. So, if you want to convert them into juices, so for all these juices, including the grape juice, the monthly output is 6,144 litres a month, with the exception of lemonade, that is 7,680 litres a month. And that's going to be the key difference between these. That extra one at the end, when you look at these recipes, makes a difference because the other juices, these three juices, and the, yeah, no, these four, including the grape juice, you're selling these at £5,376 per thousand litres. Same with the lemonade, and I'll show you just to show you I'm not just looking at my screen. So, apple juice, 5376, 5376. 5376 and 5376 and just from the greenhouses alone you can get £396,000 a year for these juices but for lemonade because we're getting that uh, 19,000 litres a year yeah 19,000 litres a year that is an extra £99,000 you're getting almost half a million just with lemonades. Obviously, I have not included what you need to fill them up. So, for example, the lemonades will need five, seven and a half thousand litres of lemonades a month or lemons a month. And if you look at the greenhouses, that is what, 1500, no, 1450. 1800 see about five six thousand litres so you need two greenhouses to keep up with the production but I think how much is the greenhouse fruit so if we go down to our greenhouses so for the fruits 15 grand so heck yeah for the sake of 15 grand you're getting an extra 100 grand a year and plus you got extras as well, so you can sell those or have another production down for it or whatever. So that is the juices and the new fruits for that. Next we'll move on to the actual flower situation. So let me get this all set up, look at my notes here a sec. So yep, yeah, here we are. So we've looked at the dry corn. Yes, that's the most profitable, but realistically you're not going to keep up with that production so we're looking at corn flour so looking at ratios 1200 15 to 13 in terms with the output that is 15,600 liters a month annually that is 187,200 liters and in terms with the peak price so looking at corn flour so corn flour peak price two thousand and sixty seven pounds so when you multiply by that that yields us three hundred and eighty seven million pounds a year but we can also get fine corn flour and all that needs is the dried corn the dried corn ain't an issue but still, that feels like a more of a premium, yeah, it feels like a premium version. But in terms with, yeah, yeah, 
more per thousand litres. But because the cycles per month is almost three times as less, so 1200 to 480, same amount of output. So what that means is for the fine corn, corn flour, or fine CF as in the spreadsheet, you're only getting 6,240 years a month. That is just under 75,000 years a year. And for selling that, £3,630 a year, as we've seen here. You're only, well, I say you're only getting £272,000 a year for the corn flour. So, obviously, with production chains, that means you'll need to process them even more. So, if we look at our bakery situation, Again, I'm not, I'm not looking at bread, and I'm not looking at the cakes. The cakes are the same. The bread, I think that is double, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, so, what I've got down here is cornbread. So, if we're looking at the cornbreads, technically we can produce 8,160 litres a month. And for this, we can... Unlike with sweet corn bread, we'll look at that insect. So, in terms of output, yeah, it's about 98,000 liters a year. Selling that, 6,480 pounds. So, once again, we'll go back up here. 6,480 in April and May. That is our best profit you can get with this. A sagarin, 634 and a half thousand pounds a year and in terms of keeping this up like keeping up with productions we've got field eight in that field eight and even maybe field seven just with those fields alone you can profit at however if we go down to sweet cornbread this requires fine corn flour and remember we're only producing just over 6,000 litres a month. So the theoretical 12,000 we can produce, according to this cycles per month and recipe for our input requirements of fine corn flour, we need to half this compared to the cornbread. So what does that mean? So rather than 8,160 litres a month, we're only getting 4,080 litres a month, so that is just under 49,000 a year. Peak sale price is £9,720 a year. But still, in terms of profit, you're getting 475 grand a year, so overall, I'm still saying not too bad. And so far, as well, I've noticed you can't put any of these production chains back down, so we go to our build mode and productions so factories no other modded ones apart from the ferment silo and the juice factory and for looking at let's say dot green mill so where's that to there so yeah we don't get any of the extra outputs and that extra capacities and that so that's the thing to look out for. But next for the last little bit of the bakery, we're going to be looking at pumpkin pie and apple pie. And for both of these, these are relatively close in terms of profit. I think yeah, the only difference is an extra £100 at peak price. But if we're looking at the ratio, so 360 cycles per month, and we get 6 per cycle. Oh, sorry, per, yeah, the recipe in that. So, 6 times 360 is 2,160 litres a month. Times that by 12 months, that is just under 26,000 litres a year. And if we look at the peak sell prices once more, so 10,692, 10,792. So, for pumpkin pie, you're getting 277 grand 
and for the Apple Paw you're getting just under 280 grand so even again still 280 grand a year that is nothing to sub about actually yeah there's other productions than that you get a lot more money per month for example with me on New Man's Land recently of where are you over 10 million pounds in a month yes I was with some asterisks but still don't just say oh you're only sticking to one production like say to the greenhouses or whatever just because of oh, you get the most free most bang for your buck you still do saw bills and that so there are mods now like substitute these and even for what we're looking at here like the greenhouses I'm sure there's better ones faster production rates per month than that but sometimes it's always that case and one thing I have noted also in my separate notes just because I didn't think it was worth including initially in my table so if we go to the BGA you can purchase this for 300 grand as we've seen in the map tour and yeah, if we head over here and have a look looking at the signage so looking at 24 cycles per month I haven't really didn't really focus on the inputs, but it holds half a million years of signage and actually 8,400 times 24 is 203,000 litres of signage required and for the price of signage I guess it's going to be around the was it £500 mark per thousand litres, give or take? Because I think we're on easy mode, easy economy. So you have silage, you have 567, so yeah, if you just sell the silage as is, not process it any further, you're only getting, what, just over 110 grand or so, give or take? However, if we decide to sell this at the BJ, well, not sell it, but input it, you get 1,250 litres of methane per month, or per cycle net, or per recipe per cycle net, and the digestate, you get 2,500 litres for every cycle net. And yep, on its own, that may not seem much, but just for the methane alone, uh, if we look at our methane, so under prices and methane, at a very consistent £3,024, that is what? Over a million pounds almost, I think, or something on those lines. And obviously, with the digestate situation on this map, you can't sell it, there's no sell point, so. Once again, head back up here to your prices. So you've got your methane and all that other good stuff. Fabric, clothes. Our digestate. And yeah, there's no sell points for that. Yep, you can use the slurry yard by Missy B. But even still then, you're not getting much more than, what, 100 grand in that, give, give or take? Yeah, no more than a couple hundred grand, so... If I was you, I would say... Yes, use the BGA. Yep, a million pounds from the slides alone. For the slurry and manure, with all the ratios and that, you're only getting 264 grand a year. And for the sugar beet cuts, because of the sword input and outputs and all this, you're only getting around 130 grand a year. So, once again, let's get back up this table and have a look at everything. So yeah, hopefully I remember to put the table up, but yeah, just looking at the ratios and that, and theoretically, as said, the corn dryer is the best, but you ain't gonna keep up with it, so completely forget about that. So the next runner-up is the cornbread at 634 and a half grand a year potentially. Again, this is because we're on easy mode and no seats.
peak sell price or anything on those lines, so prices remain consistent in that. Apologies there, a bit of a brain fart moment. So yeah, 634 and a half grand for the cornflower. For the sweet cornbread, you're looking at 476 grand a year. And then yep, cornflower, 387 grand. And if you do in other greens and that, I'm sure you can get similar profits with wheat flour and that. Since you're getting ten times as much per month in that, so yeah, if I had to recommend what to go for in this map, I'll say go with flour and that. Get that green going. And yeah, get the green meal as soon as possible. I think it was like 80 grand or so, I can't remember. So if we head up here. Actually, we can have a little look. So, if we go to sell this. So, yeah, 80 grand we bought it for. So, yeah, an 80 grand investment can literally lead you to making hundreds of thousand pounds a year just from the production alone. Not including anything else with clout or anything else like that. So, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the guy to our production chains here on Ravenport 22 by Salabuki. I am most likely going to be starting a Let's Play series on this at some point in the near future. But until that day comes, hope you enjoyed this little episode guide to video. If so, smash that button. Feel free to down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to channel yet, then please consider. But for you to do, hope you have a nice day. But for now, this is me from Evo Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.